what's going on everyone, Scad here. In this video it's going to be the second part of the third person character series. And then, so what we're doing in this is setting up the blend trees so the character can walk in every direction. And then also sprint and crouch walk in every direction as well. If you haven't watched the first part of the series I'd recommend you go do that. But if you just want to learn about the blend trees that's fine as well. So without further ado I'm just going to get into this. Alright so the first thing you're going to want to do is head over to Mixamo.com which is just an Adobe platform where you can download characters and animations and then select a character and we want to download this and it's going to be FBX binary and a T pose we hit download I've already got it downloaded so I'm not going to do this now and then we're going to have to want animations for walking forwards and backwards and then also like strafe walking left and right and then the same for running we want to be running backwards and then running left and right and running forwards and then same for crouching, we want crouch walking forward, left and right. And I know there's not a crouch walking back animation, so we can just have the crouch walking one and then set that in reverse. And then so to download the animations, I'm just going to go find a walking one. And also we need a, a standing idle and a crouching idle animation as well. So if we just find this walking animation here, what we need to do is set it in place and then you want to hit on download and then without skin FBX binary again and in frames per second I'm going to put it as 60 but you can have it at 30 or 24 if you want it doesn't really matter so when you downloaded all those animations you're going to head over into unity but if you don't actually want to download them like one by one and just want to use the ones I'm using I'm going to have a link in the description to a folder that's just going to have the player and then all the animations Okay, so now over in Unity, what I'm going to do is I've made a folder for the player and the animations in my downloads. So I'm just going to import these and wait for them to import. So first of all, we're going to go into the player folder and right click this and create a new folder. We call this materials. And by the way, if you download the, the files from the description, you're not going to have to do any of this next part until you actually start making the blend trees. So next I'm going to make the texture folder and then go on the player extract textures, select the texture folder and wait for it to do its thing. And you might get a message pop up saying about the normal map settings, we just got to press fix now. And then finally on the player we just go to extract materials and then click the materials folder and wait for it to do its thing again. Now this is done we need to go over into the rig on the player, set the animation type to humanoid and then hit apply. And then now in the animations folder what we need to do is go set up quite a few things so for all of these we're going to need to do the same thing and then so if we select and then shift select the last one we want to change the animation type to humanoid and then create from this model we want to go copy from other avatar select this little circle and hit the player avatar which has just been made from the player and then we want to hit apply and then each of these so if I click on this one and go on the animation you can see its name is mixmo.com and then all of them they're named for the animations mixamo.com so we're going to actually want to go and change all of these so I'm just going to go on the idle animation change it to idle and then just go through quickly and do this for the rest of them alright now on the final step for the animations you don't have to do this but I feel like it makes it a lot more organized in your folders so if I go onto these animations here and then open this up and we click on the idle we just duplicate the animation and then we can delete the FBX because we don't actually need this anymore. So I'm just going to do this as well and then come back when it's done. And as you can see, now I've only got the animation files in these folders and we can go ahead and what I'm going to do is drag the player into the scene but as a child of this capsule. And then on the capsule, what I'm going to do is just get rid of the mesh renderer and the mesh filter. And then also on the capsule collider or the character controller, sorry, I'm going to move the center up to 0 0.9 the radius is going to be 0 0.25 and the height will be 1.8 for this character. Alright, so now that's done, what I'm going to do is go ahead onto the player. And we can see we need an animated controller, so I'm just going to make this in the player folder. Create, and it's going to be an animator controller down here. And then I'm just going to call this player controller. And then select back on the player and just drop this in here. Now if we double click on the player controller, it will bring up the animator window. 
And then first what we're going to want to do is just drag in an idle animation, which is in this walking folder. And then the entry will go directly to the state. So if we play the game, you'll see that we're going to start the game in the idle state. And then one thing I forgot to mention, on all these animations, we need to go onto them and then select loop time to true. So I'm just going to do that and come back real quick. Alright, so now I've done that, back in the animator, what we can do now is just make our first blend tree. So if you right click anywhere on the screen, go on create state, and then from new blend tree. And I'm just going to rename this the walking tree, or just walk in. I'm going to double click it to open it, and then just change this to walking again. And then first what we need to do up here is add a new parameter, because we're going to need two floats. One is going to be the horizontal input, and then the other one will be the vertical input. And you can rename this just by double clicking on it. And now if we click on the blend tree, we want the blend type to be 2D freeform directional. And the parameters, you can see here we've got the vertical input and we want to change this one to the horizontal input. So first of all, what we want to do is just add in five fields for this one. And then in the first one, what we're going to do is just add in the idle animation. And this is going to be zero for the X and zero for the Y. And as you can see, the V input is for the X, and then the C input is for the Y. But I'm actually just going to change these around. It's personal preference. So now, I can add in the walking animation next. And this is going to be 0 on the X, which is the horizontal input. And we want 1 for the vertical input, which is walking forwards. Next, we want walking back, which is going to be 0 and minus 1. And then we can add the right strafe in, which is going to be 1 and 0. And then finally the left strafe, which is going to be minus 1 and then also 0. So now if we hit play, you can see he's not going anywhere. If we move the slider up, he walks forward. If we move it back, he starts walking backwards. And then if we move it to the right, you can see he's not walking to the right. If we move it to the left, he's also not walking to the left. And this is because on the animations themselves, on the right strafe, if we press play, you can see he just he's looking in a funny direction, but he's still sort of walking forwards. And then so we're just going to change this root transform rotation until he is actually walking right. So as you can see, here we got minus 65. So I'm going to go onto the left strafe now and then type in 65. So this means he's going to be walking the opposite way. So now if we press play again, we can see if we put the horizontal input all the way to the right, he's walking fully right. And the vertical input up, and he's walking right and forwards, so forwards and right. And then, but now if we go backwards, you can see, I mean, he kind of does a little side step backwards and right, but that's not really what we want. So what we're going to do is just create two new animations. And then this isn't actually animating ourselves. We're just going to have the walking back duplicate this two times. And then I'm going to change the name of this one to walking back right. And then change the name of the other one to walking back left. All right, so now on the walking back right, we're just going to press play. And we want him to actually be walking backwards and right. So he's going to be walking backwards in this direction. So we're going to move the offset over to the left. So he's pointing that way. And you can see he's walking backwards and right now. So I'm just going to put this at 45. There you go. And then finally on the walking back left, I'm going to put this one to minus 45. And then just check if this is okay which it is. So now on the walking tree, we're going to add two more motion fields. And then we're just going to drag these in. So walking back left and walking back right. And to walk backwards and left, we want minus one on the horizontal input and then also minus one on the vertical. And then walking backwards and right is going to be one and minus one. Now on the preview, when we press play, you can see with the vertical input is minus one. And the horizontal input is one. He's walking backwards and right. So that's great. That's what we want. So the walking tree is now done. So we can go onto the base layer. All right. So now I'm going to go ahead and make the crouching blend tree. So I'm going to right click again, create state from new blend tree. I'm going to rename this to crouching. Open this up, change this to crouching as well. And then change the blend type, same 2D freeform directional and with the horizontal input and the vertical input. And then once again, we're gonna start off with five motion fields. And then the first being the crouch idle, which is gonna be zero, zero. The crouch walk, which is gonna be zero, one on the Y. 
And then to crouch walk back, I'm just going to duplicate the crouch walk in, rename it, and then just call it crouch walk back, just so it's two different animations rather than sharing the same one. And now all we need to do is just put this to minus one to play it in reverse. And then it's going to be minus one on the Y and zero on the X. And then the last two, we're going to have the crouch walk right, which is one on the X, zero on the Y. And then finally the crouch walk left, which is minus one on the X and then zero on the Y again. Now if we preview this and put it up in the V input, you can see I'm walking forward, but it's a bit off center. So once again, we're going to go on the crouch walk animation and then change the offset until he's walking straight. So there you go, that's good enough for me. And then also on the crouch walking back, it's going to be exactly the same because it is the same animation. Alright, now we can test it some more and go forwards and right. You can see that working. Forwards and left, that's working as well. Fully left. Oh, that's backwards and left, so we need to make more animations for that. But fully left, you can see that's working. And then also fully right, that's working as well. So now all we need to do is just remake the crouching and walking back and right and the back and left animations. So we're going to do that with the crouch walk again. Duplicate it two more times. Rename them crouch walk back right. And then for the other one, rename this to crouch walk back left. Now finally, all we need to do is just change the offset here again. So you can see we just need to get it to walk forwards and right for the walking back and left one because it's going to be played in reverse. So we want it to go this way and then it will actually be going this way. So we're just going to turn this some more. So that looks pretty good there. And then I'm just going to copy this because on the crouch walk back right, we can just paste this and then take away the minus. There we go. So if we play this, okay, it's walking too far. So that's not actually what we need to do. There we go. So somewhere around there. Cool. All right. So now we've got these animations. We just need to add in two more motion fields. And then the first one is the crouch walk back right. And then the second one, the crouch walk back left. Let's check that's the right ones. Yep. So crouch walk back right, we want it to be one and minus one again. And then on the time, we also want this minus one. And then for position X, we want have a minus one, also a minus one, and then also a minus one on the time. All right, so now we've got this, we can actually just check if it's working properly. So we put the V input to minus one. And then here we see him walking backwards and left. We put it to one, he's walking backwards and right. So now finally we can go ahead and make the sprint tree or the running tree. So I'm going to do that quickly now and come back and uh, challenge you to do it yourself. But I'm going to do a quick overview of what I've done after I've done it. So I'll see you in a sec. All right, so now you can see I've set up the running blend tree. I'm just going to rename this to running quickly. And then, so if I press play on here, what we've got when we run forward, forwards and right, forwards and left, and then also the same for the backwards directions. So how I did this was just putting the idle animation first at zero and zero, and then you can read all these, and I made my own running back right and back left animations, and then also for the running right and the running left, I had to change the offset. So now that's all done, we can go ahead and actually link these blend trees together by going up into the base layer. All right, and I've already set these up because this video is getting quite long already. So what I did was add three more parameters, which are all going to be booleans. And then the first one is just called crouching. The second one's called walking. The third is running. And then from the idle state, we're going into the walking if walking is true. I've also taken off the exit time for all these transitions. And going back from walking to idle, we have exit time off as well. Walking is false. And then we go from idle to crouching if crouching is true crouching to idle if crouching is false and then from walking to crouching if walking is true and crouching is true and then from crouching to walking if walking is true crouching is false and then finally we go from crouching to running if running is true and then from walking to running if running is true and then back from running to walking if running is false you can now demonstrate this if I go into the game view and I'm just going to drag out this animator over here just so we can see it and I'm going to hit play. So now in play mode, if I click on the crouching ball here, you can see him crouching. And if I click it again, he goes back to idle. And if I hit the walking and set the V input to one, you can see him walking. And then set it to minus one, you can see him walking backwards. 
and then the same with running, he's running backwards now, put it to one, he's running forwards. So that's everything for this video, and then in the next one we're going to be writing the finite state machine to tie this all together, so when we actually move it plays the animations, and we have the different states for crouching, walking and running, so we can do things like change the move speed when we enter a new state, and then also if we're walking backwards in a certain state we can set a certain speed, and then also trigger the animations in the scripts. So I'll see you in the next one. Hope you enjoyed. See you later. Bye.